When the Boko Haram insurgency broke out in Nigeria in 2009, both the citizens and the government did not foresee that the carnage and terror would linger for so long. Now it's been 12 years since the country has been battling with insurgency, kidnapping and other vices with hope to win the war, but the impact of the conflict is still hitting the country hard. Our correspondent Mary Kano in this next report chronicles some of the activities of the terrorist group in the last 12 years. What started off as mail whispers on the street of Maiduguri 12 years ago has snowballed into the number one terrorist organization in Nigeria. The Boko Haram sect has come a long way since the death of its first leader, Mohammed Yusuf, which compelled the group into not only seeking to avenge his death, but also launching incessant attacks across the country's north community by community. Yusuf's successor, Abubakar Shekel, led vicious attacks that left hundreds of thousands homeless, thousands dead, and left the government with the monumental humanitarian crisis. The group is also notorious for attacks on state establishments, and its onslaught received more international attention following an attack on the United Nations building in Abuja, the nation's capital, in 2011, where about 21 people were killed, with many others injured. Another incident which still lingers is the abduction of more than 200 Chibok schoolgirls in Borno State in 2014, which sparked global outcry and the hashtag Bring Back Our Girls movement. Again in 2018, another set of schoolgirls were also abducted, this time in Dapchi, Yobi State. Since then, the Boko Haram insurgency has continued with the insurgents spilling over to neighboring Niger and the Lake Chad Basin. Terrorists and the criminals must be fought and destroyed relentlessly so that the majority of us can live in peace and safety. The anti-insurgency war has come at a huge cost not only in terms of lives lost but also finance. Could the events of the past 12 years which saw the rise of Boko Haram have been avoided? To bring this war to an end, there is an uh, element that is missing sorely, that is intelligence. That intelligence component has been missing, particularly human intelligence. If we sit down and enter into the minds of the insurgents, we begin to have insight that will inform what we do. But most of the time what I see is the authorities sit down in the federal capital territory and just sound off their statements, whereas these insurgents do what they have to do and claim they're in ground zero. We've mentioned it time and again that it is not only kinetic force that is going to solve this problem. There are other root causes that will lead us to solve this problem in other ways. The Nigerian Armed Forces has also suffered losses. The insurgents have killed several personnel in ambush with scores of equipment damaged. What the Boko Haram incident has showed us that you do not wait until war comes, then you start acquisition. Because it That's is too late. True. That is what we are suffering mm. now. We are acquiring while we are fighting. It is not easy. But with the arrival of the first batch of the Super Tucano aircraft in Nigeria, experts say the Nigerian troops have gained an upper hand. With well, the federal government uh, trying to raise the numbers of platforms that the Nigerian Air Force has is something to be celebrated. The Tucano is one of the few aircraft in the world that is right from design. It was made for counterinsurgency and irregular warfare. Nigeria's military warfare against insurgents continues. As troops battle in the forefront, thousands of Nigerians displaced by the war hold on to hope of when they can return to a home devoid of insurgents. Mary Kanu, TV360, Nigeria.